Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of It's Cool with Jazzy Cool. I said Jazzy Cool. I That's the first time I've said that. Uh, I haven't been called that since, like, junior year, because <laughs> the senior boys would call me that. Mm, not the best memories, but they weren't terrible. Like, it was fine. Anyways, today is my first, like, actual official day of, like, full college classes, and... I discovered I, f I have the perfect little gap in time to do this every day. It's going to make my Mondays extremely busy and probably a bit overwhelming. But it's like the perfect little gap in time where my roommate has a class right now that I don't have a class because my roommate and I have like pretty much the same classes just either in like different rooms or at different times. So she's at sight singing right now. And I will be in sight singing at, like, 2. <laughs> so I uh, have this perfect little, perfect little gap in the morning here. Um, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed by my class schedule at the moment because literally I have no time to eat today. Um, like, I suppose I could get up super early to get breakfast, but I'm not good at that. So I will just be relying on what I have in my room. And if eventually I'm going to have to go get more food. Because um, if this is going to become a regular thing, which I think it is, it's, it's not going to go well. Because I'm not getting up early to get breakfast. And then it's, it's weird because I'm recording this on a Monday. And Mondays, my class schedule, like covers like all of the breakfast hours and all of the lunch hours that are available to like eat um at least for this week because we have a voice meeting on Mondays from like 12 30 to 1 30 which is normally when my studio class will be on Wednesdays so like for the rest of the term I won't be able to eat lunch on Wednesdays but I will be able to eat on Mondays. It's confusing. But <laughs> that's something that is, like, so different about college compared to, like, high school is that the schedule is different every day. And this week is going to be so, like, nerve-wracking for me just worrying about, like, am I in the right spot? Am I there at the right time? Like... <laughs> Am I in the right classroom right now? Did I write down all of my classes correctly or did I write down the wrong one? Because so many different classes every day. <laughs> and then, so it's funny because like Mondays and Wednesdays, I'll have like four classes. And then Tuesdays, I'll have like, I think it's like three. And then Thursdays, I have one class. And it's an 8.30 like oral skills class or something and that's not going to be fun <sighs> but it's going to be fine um this week has been super super busy super busy it's like it was welcome week for the first years and so we had orientations and various different things we did this thing called strive 365 except strive was spelled s-t-r-y-v and i was just calling it in my head until we got to the thing s-t-r-y-v like i was not making the connection that it was strive like not at all um, i was just sitting i was just chilling thinking it was just like abbreviated for something but that was funny they made us like some of the activities we had to do were like um, like physical activities, like they had spike ball, this game called spike potato, which was like volleyball, except it had to hit the ground at some point. I didn't really get it. I didn't get to play that one. I did have to play spike ball, and I <laughs> that was like the physical activity we had to do. But then they had other ones where, like, you got p sorted into these groups based on, like, a color sticker and a number that was on your name tag. And then you had to, like, do different, like, team building activities, basically, with them. Like, one of them was, like, categories, But not how I was used to playing categories, because I'm used to playing categories where, like, 
you have um, like a category and a letter, and they were playing it where it was like the category, but then you have to go in alphabetical order. So if the category was animals, it would be like ant, bear, cat, dog, gorilla, like that order, which is different from how I was used to playing categories because my dad was my high school history teacher and we would play categories in his class every once in a while. Um, so it was, it was interesting. One of them, we had to like debate with another group. Like we each got, so there was a scenario where we were each trying to get a certain percentage of $100. And then we would each get different like personality traits and then an amount that we were trying to get. So for example, the card that my team got was um, we were competitive and we were the hustler. So we were just trying to get as much as possible. And the amount we were trying to get to was 80 out of the $100. And then we were going against a group and their traits, they were also competitive and they could only go down by a dollar at a time. <laughs> and they were trying to get 60 of the $100. And so my team, naturally, because we were competitive and trying to get the most ridiculous amount of the money, we chose to be a football team um, because that's that's how the football team is. So I put on my jock personality and I was just like acting like a dick, you know, as they do. And <laughs> I felt so bad because the other team was like a middle school <laughs> that needed textbooks. That was what they had decided. So they were playing like the sympathy card and we're over here acting like football jocks. And they're like, just fundraise. And we're like, we can't. We just, we want this money. Um, we ended up eventually just going 50-50 because if you didn't come to an agreement like within the allotted time, then um, you you both walk away with nothing. So we just went 50-50 because I, w I was very willing to compromise early because I like in reality, the football team would be fundraising and the middle school that actually needs textbooks would get my money, okay? Um, <laughs> it was a very interesting activity, though. My roommate and I <laughs> have been sticking together. We stuck together, like, that whole week. So the fact that we, like, have classes without each other is a little weird. But we're both managing, I think, because everybody here is really nice and um, all of our classes right now pretty much are conservatory classes so even nicer people <laughs> um, but we would we, we get meals together too and we would always get the same thing and somebody actually pointed it out to us yesterday <laughs> they're like you guys always get the same thing and I think it's really cute and we're like yeah, because I don't want to stand in a line by myself. And then, like, what if, like, if I get done first, then I just have to stand in the middle of the spot waiting for my roommate because I don't, I don't want to go try and find a table by myself. That's awkward. And then she has to try and figure out where I am. <laughs> you would think we knew each other before we came here, but we literally didn't. We... We just vibe on the same level. Our anxiety kind of works the same. So we get it. <laughs> it's It's been interesting because normally I need an extroverted person to drag me around. And I, it's kind of forcing me to be the extroverted person dragging us around. <laughs> um which is which is fun, new experience for me, but not too bad. Um there's a guy in the conservatory who, um, so my family is big into barbershop, like singing, like quartet singing. Um, and there's a quartet that was at International um, for a few years. They didn't do it this year, unfortunately, because they had some like issues with their people, but um, called the Newfangled Four. It's like a comedy, they're a comedy quartet, um, but they sing pretty well, um, and 
their lead is like this tall redhead and there's a guy in the conservatory who looks exactly like their lead and it's even funnier because the lead's name is Jackson okay i prob but the uh, and the other guy's name starts with a j i'm not going to say his name not going to out him like that um but it starts with a j which makes it really funny um and also new barbershop knew who i was talking about when i walked up to him and i was like do you know barbershop he's like yeah and i was like so there's this quartet like the new fangled four he's like no stop it don't even go there i get that all the time <laughs> like odds are this guy knew barbershop enough to know who i was talking about <laughs> crazy but that was funny um something even funnier so uh, we have like little name tags on our doors that like mine like m mine and my roommates they're basketballs and we're so confused because we're like oh, we're not on the basketball team what turns out it's because our ca is on the basketball team and so we're on like a gender inclusive floor so rca is like a literal like jock man <laughs> like is on the basketball team at this school it's so crazy um <laughs> but we had to do these like roommate agreements where we come up with um uh, it, it's exactly what it sounds like things that you and your roommate agree to and then we had to like send it to him and um, <laughs> we spent like 10 minutes looking up euphemisms for, for sex because we were like, we got to make this fucking ridiculous. I want him to laugh out loud, if at all possible. Um, so naturally, our agreement was uh, no drinking, no smoking, because we're both voice majors and none of us neither of us want to drink anyways so it won't be a problem but we're like we'll put it down anyways um don't break each other's stuff which i hope is pretty straightforward but we needed something else and then our fourth rule was give a warning if you're gonna bring someone back to get your corn ground or grope for trout in a peculiar river <laughs> and the response we got <laughs> was well, I had also, we had also asked for his phone number because he said we could do that if we needed to, like, ask questions or something. So he said, of course. Love the metaphors, by the way. Laugh, cry emoji. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. So that was great. Um, <laughs> but it's been, it's been interesting um, we had a class dinner where we sign, like, an honor code that's, like, a big deal at this school, um, that you're not gonna cheat, and you're, like, you'll do good and try your best, blah, 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 and you had to, like, write letters to yourself, and my roommate and I were both taking it, like, half seriously, like, we would answer, it was, like, fill in the blank, so you had to, like, predict your GPA, predict, like, what you're gonna major in or like at the moment what you think you're gonna major in and then it was like so it was like what do you think facebook is gonna become what strengths do you bring to the school what are you most confident in your ability to do and then the last thing of course was <laughs> um after my four years here i will be able to say and <laughs> we both we both we both put down um uh i groped for trout in a peculiar river because um the only person who was going to see it was us nobody else was going to see this so we we're like this is hilarious <laughs> and we were sitting next to these two people who we hadn't really met before like we'd kind of seen but there's like 400 people in our class so we'd like kind of seen them but I'm pretty sure they thought we were really weird. They were not as entertained by us as we were by ourselves. <laughs> but that's their own fault for being like, like that. I, d I d okay, I think they thought we were like fine. <laughs> but they definitely thought we were weird. Um, we did something really cool a couple nights ago. I think it was like Friday night. 
we had like a diversity, equity, and inclusion like talk, but it was like with this guy named Big Piff, who um, he's like a hip hop artist and did some like interactive stuff with it. And they described it like my school described it very poorly because n like nobody showed up. And I think it's because literally everybody like thought they were gonna make us dance because that's kind of what it sounded like. And they didn't spell out diversity, equity, and inclusion. They just said DEI. So, and I did not know that that meant diversity, equity, and inclusion until I was there. And also the interactiveness wasn't like forced participation, which is also kind of what they made it sound like. Like it sounded like they were going to make us dance, which is not what it was. It was way cooler than that. It was like one of the coolest things we did like all week in our um, orientations and stuff. And like no, hardly anybody showed up because nobody knew what it was, even though it ended up being really cool. Um, <laughs> we got taught how to rap which was hilarious, or like a basic like 16 bars for your bars. Um, uh, you you want to like rhyme on the on the four of the measure. Um, I would give you mine, but it has my roommate's name in it, and I don't know if she would want me to say her name. It rhymes, I guess. It rhymes with Rumi, <laughs> so it was like. First person I met was my friend. I'll just say Rumi twice. Rumi. Didn't know her. Now she's my Rumi. Um, at dinner, we had... Oh, shit. Okay, I can't even remember. But then it was like we had some curry. It was so bland. Had to leave in a hurry. Because for dinner that day, the curry... Like, it was supposed to be curry. And so bland. It was like the blandest thing I've ever eaten, which was surprising because the food in the cafeteria hadn't even been that bad. It was like relatively good food, I think. Like their marinara was like spicy. I liked their marinara. It had, it had some kick. I mean, it was, it's pretty sweet for a marinara, but I liked that. Um, but this curry was just so bland. It was a, like, I am like traumatized from it. Not literally, but... <laughs> It was ridiculous how bland this curry was. So <laughs> I think we both wrote like our little raps about that. But see, and they made us do that, but they like didn't make you get up and share it. They only like had you share if you like wanted to. So it was like really fun because this guy was interesting and he talked about how he like travels to all these different countries and he describes it as like a cultural exchange. Like he learns from them as they're learning from him. And that's, like, because a big part of the school is community and, like, the diversity of the school and being able to, like, meet people from different backgrounds and different, like, walks of life and people who you can learn from and who you can kind of, like, I'm not teaching anybody. I'm a little white girl from a small town. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm gay. There's that. I guess I have that going for me. Um... The small town experience is crazy. Uh, me and my roommate, we have another friend who is also a soprano who we met here from like San Francisco. So when we'll talk about, cause my roommate is also from a small town just in like a, like a different Midwestern state. Um, but when we talk to our friend from San Francisco about our different experiences it's like so weird because she was telling us a story about how she locked her dog outside the house one time and she was like I double locked the doors and me and my roommate were both just like you lock the doors to your house I live like a mile away from the nearest neighbor so that's like not a problem for me and then <laughs> we were both talking about how like oh yeah like a walmart you don't lock your car you don't lock your car in the walmart parking lot <laughs> you just like what's the point nobody's gonna take your stuff of course you say that and then it's gonna happen but um it doesn't really because why why would you <laughs>
um yeah and then like she was talking about how her house is big for like san francisco standards but it's like a knot around here which made me think like that's part of the reason my mom wanted to live in like a rural area is because she could have a big house <laughs> with how much money they make because my mom is a professor and my dad is a high school history teacher so they don't they're extremely underpaid. My mother is especially underpaid because she has a doctorate in educational leadership and is making less than my dad as a high school history teacher. It's, it's kind of ridiculous um, and upsetting. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we're managing. <laughs> I was very glad when I was able to get enough scholarships and make enough money that I did not have to take any money from my parents. With, like, because, you know, we're like the middle class. And the middle class is disappearing. <laughs> so, and in the United States, basically, you're like struggling or you have more money than you know what to do with. So, we're like borderline struggling and none of us like to say that because we're extremely privileged like we're a white family in the like our we have a big house we go to a good school like our parents are educated like we're able to go to college and like do this stuff so we don't like saying we're struggling plus we just grew up like in an environment where asking for help or struggling is like really bad <laughs> Um, but we, like, it's, it's something that's difficult to admit because, like, plus we're not really struggling. Like, it just seems like something, it feels like complaining about nothing. It feels like whining, even though it's, like, a valid concern to have, especially with the state of, like, the United States economy and, like, class situation. It's valid to be worried about stuff like that because the middle class is disappearing and we are the middle class. <laughs> so it's it's kind of scary. Well, this is me like um many hours later. Uh it turns out that gap in time that I found is a little shorter than I anticipated. Um but it ended up it ended up fine. So this is me done with all of my classes for the day. Um just kind of sitting in my room trying to avoid practicing the monologue I have to memorize tomorrow for um, the musical auditions that we didn't really know about until like for certain like I didn't know I was going to audition until like two hours ago honestly <laughs> um, and auditions are tomorrow but it'll be fine I'm quite tired um, it's been a full day. I did, I did get to eat lunch though, because our voice meeting got done a little early. So then we were able to make it to lunch. And I was able to pick up a couple of my packages that were like in the mail. Because um, my dad sent me four pre sliced pool noodles. <laughs> um, because we lofted our beds so we can put them on the edge so that when we smack our heads, it doesn't hurt as bad. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, and he sent me four of them because it was cheaper that way and it got free shipping. So I gave one to my roommate and then I gave one to our other soprano friend. Um, but now I have just a random extra pre-sliced pool noodle. I don't know what to do with it. Um, it was funny when I picked it up from the mail, found out, like, the, the mail lady asked me what they were, like, I got all these pool noodles coming through, coming through, like, what's with all the pool noodles? So then I told her, and she's like, oh, we just had so many, which was interesting. I found out today for my sight singing class that, because I had found a free PDF of one of the textbooks, found out today that like today that they don't that you're not allowed to have like your laptops or anything out in that class which 
is really, really fucking annoying because even like on the bookstore, like for the school, for the class, the one they recommend you to get is the ebook because the actual book is like $114. And like, I'm not really down for that. So I'm thinking because we have like a printing allowance. Um, my roommate and I are kind of just thinking that each of us will print like half the book, even though even though that's like a shit ton of paper. But we'll each print like half the book, and then she'll use it in the morning, and I'll use it in the afternoon because we don't have the class at the same time, so we can just use the same book. Because there's that small period of time where she comes back, and we're like in the same room. And there's even like there's just time between our classes, so like um, we'll we'll be able to swap out. I think that's a great idea, and she thinks it's a good idea. So I think that's what we're gonna do. And then we'll just buy a binder and put it in the binder and use that um, <laughs> because I'm not paying $114 for that book. I already had to buy the other one from that class because it was like the version they wanted was like written by the professor so I had to buy it and I know I'm complaining like a ridiculous amount because I got so lucky because I have a friend who's like basically in the same program as me that like gave me all of the books I'm gonna need pretty much for this year except for like the music theory ones and like except for this one that I need <laughs> but I think she ended up in like a higher like level of this than I did but yeah so I think that's th that's what we're gonna do whatever you have to do to not pay for textbooks because I think that's a ridiculous expense um that they don't like why why do they make you pay for that but um waiting to see what choir I get placed in because I have a lot of things to schedule with people like I'm supposed to schedule I'm supposed to schedule a time to meet with a writing tutor for my first year studies class because we have a paper due on Sunday. It's not a very long paper. It's 700 to 800 words, which is really short for a paper, but it's about one poem. <laughs> but um I have to schedule that, but I need to know what choir I'm in before I can schedule that because that's like every day from either like 3 to 4 or 4.30 to 5.30. So it's very important. And then I'm also supposed to schedule a rehearsal with an accompanist for my studio class next week because all the first years are singing for the rest of our studio. So I have to schedule that. But I also can't do that until I know where my choir is. And then I'm supposed to tell my like voice teacher my availability for like lessons but I also can't give her that until I know what choirs I'm in so I'm really just waiting on that we actually had like a short little call back for that like an hour from when I'm recording this part of this to like test us again oh my gosh my choir audition I was like shitting my pants for it I was so nervous but it was honestly almost one of the most affirming experiences like in like music auditioning that I've done because like I walked in there and I was putting on my best posture because that's what my mom said was the key and I was like Ugh, fine I'll listen um <laughs> but I was doing that and then um they asked me where I was from and I told them and they asked about my friend who I know who's like from the same place as me was like a year older than me um and then we did their range exercises okay this is where the thing happened so they got to my upper range and I'm a soprano I know and at one point at like the last exercise one of the guys goes it gets interesting up there doesn't it and the other one goes um, someone's going to be singing Queen of the Night someday. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Because when they first said that, I was like panicking at first. I was like, oh no, interesting. What does that mean? But then they made the Queen of the Night comment. And I'm like, oh my God. 
that's like so affirming because that's like a big deal that's like one of like the most well-known soprano roles ever and then I like kind of smiled or like laughed or whatever and then they went no seriously and I was just like oh my god I am thriving right now <laughs> um but then we had like recalls today where they wanted to hear me sing my country tis of thee and a couple more keys and I was having a very good voice day like I warmed up to like an F6 today easily which was very nice that's that's very nice I wasn't pushing myself though because I didn't want like I was gonna sing for like five seconds so I didn't want to like fully war like push myself too hard um it's a good thing I didn't but anyways I was having a very good voice day so I walk in there ask me for my name again and then has me do it in like a middle voice key has me do it in like a high voice key has me do it in like a high voice key and then goes one more and then has me do it like just slightly higher um it was great it was it's very affirming because i was like shitting my pants for that and then just the look on his face the whole time it just seems like he likes my voice, which is very, that's like, that's what I'm here for. So that's extremely nice to like see that like one of the teachers here at this like big school, just like, it's nice to know that they like your voice, you know, it's great. <laughs> um, I actually ended up in the same voice studio as my friend that I already knew and also from one of my camp counselors from the fine arts camp I went to last summer that like changed my career path. Um, I may have to tell, I'll, I'll try and tell that story next week now that I have a little teaser for it because that's, it's kind of a pretty big story, but, um, don't really have time for it now. Um, I guess I'll start wrapping things up. Oh, do I even have a favorite song this week? Let's, let's see. Oh, my goodness. I've been getting back into uh, Moneskin, an Italian rock band that won Eurovision, like, last, like, 2021, I think. Um, so I guess we'll say Ziti e Boni by Moneskin is my favorite song for this week. So thank you, everybody, for listening, and I'll see you next week.